So in this video, we're going to talk about waveguides. And this can be any sort of waveguide. So this might be an optical waveguide. Uh, this might be an RF waveguide. This might be an, even an acoustic waveguide uh, or some other kind of waveguide. Now, first off, what's the point of a waveguide? Why would we want to use one? Uh, and so let's say that we've got two people. So on the one hand, we've got Alice, and on the other, we've got Bob. And Alice wants to send some type of information to Bob. How does she do it? Uh, well, first, she might just yell at him. So she might just say, Bob, I want to tell you something. Um, and the problem with this is the same problem with all other forms of communication. So uh, maybe she uses her phone. Uh, maybe she uses uh, some sort of light generator. So some sort of light pattern generator over here to send a signal. But in every single case, these waves radiating away from Alice, uh, the carrier of that energy, of that information, attenuates like 1 over r squared. So it's filling a hemisphere uh, if she's on ground, for example, uh, or a, a sphere if she's in free space. But it's filling a sphere around her, and most of that information is not captured by Bob. So Bob over here, maybe, I don't know, let's say he has an, an ear, for example, uh, and he's listening to these waves. This ear is only going to have a certain area to it. And let's say that Alice and Bob are like, I don't know, a kilometer apart. Uh, in that case, you'll get an attenuation. So the from the total power that Alice sends to the total power Bob receives, uh, over this distance, let's say that Bob's ear or whatever device he's using is about five centimeters on a side, you'll get an attenuation of power of about four times 10 to the minus 10. So that's just the area of Bob's receiving device divided by the total area of the waves that are reaching Bob. And 10 to the minus 10, that's a really small number. And this was only one kilometer. We, we're humans, we want to transmit, dist transmit information over 10 kilometers, uh, 100 kilometers, or even half of the, the distance of the world, tens of thousands of kilometers. And so this attenuation is a serious problem, and this is why we want to use waveguides. And whether the radiation is uh, light or RF radiation or acoustic radiation, uh, it all spreads out in this 1 over r squared kind of manner. So then what is a waveguide? Well, uh, say instead of just yelling into the void, uh, we've got Alice over here. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting hairdo. Uh, we've got Alice over here, and then we've got Bob. And rather than just screaming into the void, Alice screams into a pipe. So uh, maybe she's actually screaming. Uh, maybe she's got a, a voice that's being transmitted into the pipe. Then as long as there's no loss, so none of her voice gets absorbed in the pipe, basically all of the output power will make it to Bob. And as long as Bob's ear... Uh, is comparable to the size of the waveguide, and so is Alice's mouth, so she sticks her mouth right up against the waveguide, then virtually none of the power is lost. And instead of uh, 4 times 10 to the minus 10 of the power reaching Bob, we've got about 100% of it, or 1. And maybe instead Alice knows a thing or two about electrical engineering, so she just sends a light signal uh, so she, I don't know, couples some sort of LED here, which emits a bunch of radiation, into an optical fiber. Uh, then the output light, similarly, uh, as long as Bob has a receiver that's comparable to the size of the fiber and Alice has a transmitter, then we're going to get about 100% of the power transmitted. Uh, the attenuation for fibers is typically on the order of a decibel per kilometer. So you might get like 20% of your light lost over a single kilometer instead of this ungodly absurd amount of loss. So you end up with 0.8 of your total power versus 4 times 10 to the minus 10. And so waveguides are amazing. They solve this really difficult problem really, really well. And we love using them. Uh, but something interesting happens. So uh, let's say that Alice sends her voice into this uh, acoustic waveguide. Um, it turns out 
that not uh, an exact copy of her voice isn't going to arrive. So not an exact copy uh, isn't going to arrive at the other end of the waveguide. It's actually going to sound different. Uh, it's gonna. It might be distorted. It might be. Uh, it might have a different pitch than Alice's initial voice, uh, and Bob might not even be able to recognize his friend Alice. Uh, and so this is a really interesting phenomenon, and this is known as dispersion. It also turns out that where the sound is uh, injected in this waveguide, so maybe Alice yells at the top of the waveguide versus the bottom of the waveguide versus the center of the waveguide, uh, that's actually really important. So that determines how much uh, power ends up getting to Bob and what that power looks like when it leaves. And these are referred to as mode profiles, or this is the phenomena that, uh, that causes these issues. And we can actually understand both of these things, so mode pro profiles and dispersion, by analyzing just one piece of information. So let's say we've got our waveguide here. Um, all we need to know is the frequency of our input signal. So maybe this is omega naught or F naught. It turns out if we analyze just one of these sine waves, we can figure out how it propagates along the axis of the waveguide. Let's call this the z-axis. We can also figure out whether it will be attenuated at the output. So whether we'll get a smaller wave or close to the initial wave. And this, uh, if you're an electri electrical engineer, you might recognize this as a linear system. And it is. Uh, waveguides generally can be treated like linear systems. And the big idea, the whole crux of figuring out how waveguides work is figuring out their transfer function. So for a given input wave, which I'm going to draw here in white, um, what does the output wave uh, in green look like? How much is it uh, reduced in amplitude? And how much is it phase shifted by the initial input wave? And on top of that, for a given frequency, what does the shape of the wave look like? So these are the two questions that we need to answer. Uh, so one, what is the transfer function of the waveguide? And two, what is the shape of the wave propagating through the waveguide? And if we can figure this out for a single frequency, omega naught, uh, or for any arbitrary frequency, omega, then we know that our input signal, uh, maybe it's f of x and time, or maybe for now, let's ignore the position dependence and just say it's a function of time. Uh, we know we can decompose this, or we can just hit this with a Fourier transform and figure out what all the different omega naughts are. So how much of each frequency do we have propagating down this waveguide? And then if we know its transfer function h, we can figure out what the output signal which I've drawn in green, what the output signal looks like. So for some arbitrary input, uh, we can figure out what the output for that corresponds to. And in order to find this, it turns out we will need to know the shape of light uh, propagating, or the shape of whatever wave it is propagating down the waveguide. But once we know those two things, uh, we can figure out the waveguide's transfer function, we can figure out how it will behave in any conceivable situation. And this will be the subject of the next few videos. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.